Well, it just doesn't seem like you preach love nor uh, being letting people be who they are. Okay, let me ask you something. And if I believe that letting people be who they are means that they will go to hell, is it loving for me to sit back and say nothing, or is it more loving for me, because of my beliefs in what this book says, to step out and do everything I can to reach? But as I've read the Bible, which I've read ever since I was probably five or six years old, on my own, long before I ever became a member of the church, yeah. I have always read in the Bible that the Lord teaches us to be understanding of other people, to be loving towards other people, and to try to help them. Okay. Hatred and anger and okay. bitterness are not those things which right. I identify with the Lord. Okay, let me, let me ask you something. I'm going to read from Scripture, okay? Chapter 23 of Matthew. Let me just read a couple passages, okay? Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites! who devours widows' houses and for pretense make long prayers, you receive the greater damnation. Woe, you who make proselytes. Woe, you blind guides, children of the devil. Now, I'm asking you, I'm asking you, does that sound like rhetoric that is the way you just described love? Uh, the way I describe love is being understanding of each other. Does that sound, if I, if I was on the screen and I said, you Mormons are so full of hypocrisy and iniquity, woe you hypocrites, you whited sepulchers. I'm reading from scripture now, Jesus' words to the Jews of his day. Now you get on here and you try to paint me as being unloving because I'm direct. I won't let people get away with things. I, I quote from the scripture. Do you realize, let me ask you something. If you had a daughter, she's 18 years old and she's got some bum who comes into the house with her and he has convinced her that heroin is a noble drug. It opens her mind to things. It will lead her to a better life. And she's fully convinced that this guy is telling her the truth. Are you going to say, well, honey, I want you to choose your way, and it's okay. We love this young man. Come sit down. Shoot up here in the living room. Or are you going to say, let me tell you what he's telling you. It's a lie. It will destroy you. Which is the loving thing, my friend? Well, having been a father, and I am a father, I, I think the most loving thing that a parent can say to a child is no. And that's only because you care about them and you want to help them. But unfortunately, Sean, that's not what I hear from you on your program. Okay, you, hear... every one of my questions to you have been purposely couched and caged with scripture, with real life situations, and all you do is flip it back and say what you see from me is not that. I have given you examples where our Lord called people pejorative terms. I haven't used pejorative terms. I am simply telling you that the, the religion you are following, sir, is a lie. Is that unloving of me or loving of me to spend my time doing that? Answer that question. If it is a lie, am I loving or unloving to point it out to you? I think your method... Answer that question. Don't worry about my methods. See, you want to now bring in my methods. You want me to take the LDS approach. Um, oh, well, we don't know about that. You, you know, Joseph Smith, about. you, know, I, you I, want methods here, buddy, and with me you don't get them. John the Baptist didn't practice Mormon methods. You have been taught a sales approach, and that sales approach, when a, when a salesperson wants to get something by on somebody, they use their charm and they use all their kindness to sway them into a sale. You don't get it with me, because I'm not here to impress you with me. I'm here to tell you what the word says relative to what you believe. And I believe that is loving. Because when you come to understand that you have been deluded and lied to, you will come back and guess what? You will not see this side of me ever. When I'm with people, even when I'm with Latter-day Saints, it doesn't come out. But on this show, my job is to do all I can to get you to find the truth. You don't have it. Like you. You don't ever feel like you need to be more tolerant of other people? Tolerant of what? Lies? Tolerant of deception? Where is the tolerance needed? Why would I tolerate the heroin addict to tell my daughter, this is good for you? I would not say, well, I agree. I agree. It can be a little fun. It's stupid. 
You get to the point, this is damaging to you. It's damaging to your children. You think you have glommed on to truth. You have not. You've been lied to. And, dip, dip, and so what you do is you use an ad hominem attack. You say, well, look at him. Look at him. I'm going to attack him now. What about my facts, uh, Rudy? What about the facts we bring up? We've done 370 shows, hour long. I have had on one hand, in seven years, Latter-day Saints actually hit me up for facts. But you want to talk about my person. Sean, can I give you a fact? Yeah. The first great commandment, as I have loved you, love one another. That's not the first great commandment. Not teach love. That's not the first great commandment. All right. What's the first great commandment, Rudy? You've read the Bible well before you became a Mormon. What did the Lord say? What's the first great commandment? Love. Who? Love the Lord with all the your heart. The Lord thy God with all your heart. That's what you're seeing on this screen right now. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's what you're seeing on this screen. What you see when you go to your meetings and hear people lie to you is deception. Satan is cunning. He's slippery. He's charming. Jesus in Matthew 23, John the Baptist, Isaiah, none of them played those rules. They told you the truth. He told a woman, hey, he told a woman... That he called, Jesus called women out on all kinds of things in love. Rudy, you've got it wrong. It's part of the deception. I think if you pray about it, Sean. Pray about what? Truth? Pray about, the pray about what, Trudy? So I can, Rudy, you want me to talk quietly and you think that is what truth is. The truth is in the word of God. It's in the word of God. It's not in your mind. It's not in politeness. must have hurt you. Some no one has hurt me. I love my... Uh, you are so angry. Okay, now you know what you're doing now? You're going to the other defense. Someone has to have hurt Sean. No one hurt me. I had a great LDS mission. I loved my ward. I like being a Mormon more than I like being a Christian. And that makes my Christian friends mad. It, you guys are far f kinder. And, you, and you, I mean, usually, and you know, at least in Southern California, you know, everybody plays a little role. But it's just like living in Stepford. It's just not true. So I want truth now. I want people who say, you know, my life sucks. Oh, gosh, I, I really had a problem last night. I overdrank. You did? Oh, wow, that's heavy. That won't help you. I know. Instead of, oh, you know, Stepford, Stepford, Step. I mean, come on, Rudy. Come on. You think because you talk. What about truth, Rudy? Give me a truth that I bring up about Mormonism. Bring one. What do you want a truth of? You tell me about There's, what it takes to be saved, Rudy. It takes to be saved. You have to accept the Lord as your Savior. You have to be taught the gospel. What gospel? Of your sins. And you have to be baptized. And what does that mean when you say that it gets the person saved, Rudy? The individual is saved because the Lord gave his life for us. What does saved mean in that context that you just painted for us? Saved is that we won't be in damnation. Okay, no, is that true? He, he took our, his sin, our sins upon him. Okay, so if I repent, I am baptized, and I believe in Jesus, you're saying I am saved from damnation. If you follow and endure to the end. And follow what? The Lord. And, ha and do what? Your LDS, you know the answer. Tell me the LDS answers. And you do... It's not you, the LDS. You do? You do what? The answer. The answer? You label everything as stupid and LDS and all. Tell me the answer, Rudy. Do I have to go to the temple? Nothing to do with the fact. What? Well, yes, they still have temples in this day and age. The Jews have temples. We have temples. The Jews have a temple. Really it's singular, my friend. They don't have temples. There's one temple on earth. Now, what did the Jews do in those temples, Rudy? Jews have multiple temples. Jews have one temple. Rudy, no, those other places are not temples. They are not their temple. They go to They're temple. their synagogues. They are not their temple. And they call it temple. That doesn't, ask any Jew, what, do you have a temple? Where is it? Where is the temple location? They do not have multiple temples, Rudy. They go to temples. Don't show your ignorance, Rudy. Mount Moriah is the only place. It's where Abraham went to sacrifice his son. Give me a break, Okay. What do you do in those temples, Rudy? Do you do what the Jews do? Do you sacrifice animals? 
Do you have a holy of holies that is kept separate by a carpet that a high priest goes in and offers blood up for the sins of your people? What do you do in that, Rudy? You do Masonic rituals, Rudy. I don't do that. I don't do satanic rituals. I said Masonic. You said satanic. <laughs> Masonic, Rudy. That's a Freudian slip if I've ever heard one. Rudy. It is. Rudy, you got to go to your temple. Now what? You're jumping on the bandwagon. Rudy, the... Rudy, what does the temple have to do with believing and following Jesus and repenting and being baptized? Because the temple is important to one's salvation. According to who, Rudy? Who have you been listening to that tells you the temple is, is important to your salvation? Why did Moses carry the temple? Moses, Old Testament, Jesus came, fulfilled the law and the prophets, Rudy. Why are you bringing up Moses? Are you saying there were no temples after Jesus? The temple was destroyed by Titus in 70 AD as prophesied by Jesus. Read 1 Corinthians about what the temple is now. Read that the veil is the flesh of Jesus Christ, that he is our high priest. You have high priests in your church, Rudy? Do I have what now? Do you have high priests in your church? Yes, I am one. You're, you're a high priest? I am. I am honored. What does that mean, Rudy? That means I am a high priest. I've been called to the office of a high priest. And what, what does that mean? What does that do for you? I help other people in the war. I help the seniors. I help take care of people. You can't do that as a human being? The ultimate workings of a priesthood holder is service. It, aren't we supposed to serve as followers of Christ? Why do you need to have this high priest in you? I've never been told that we have to be angry and hateful towards people. You call it anger and hate. I call it love. If, potato, potato. What do you want? If, Let's stay on the topic, Rudy. Let's stay on the topic. Not about me. Let's people, talk about your high priesthood. I'm hurt them. Let's talk about your high priesthood, Shame Rudy. You are hurting people when you reinforce this gospel. As much as your service, you think they're doing good, you are hurting people because you're leading them away from the cross of Christ. And you're th making them think that it's based on their righteousness that they are going to please God. It's a lie, Rudy. That's not what the Bible says. Oh, God. Were you going to quote James 2 for me? Does it not say that you have to do things you are commanded? That you have to be faithful. What are the commandments, Rudy? There's 12 of them. I'm not going to sit here and count them off. You're wrong. You don't even understand the Bible whatsoever, and it's typical. You're LDS. You are absolutely wrong about the 12 uh, commandments. You're supposed John, to be a Christian. Sound a little arrogant, what you just said. That I, I don't, don't care about if you think I'm arrogant. You're wrong. And I'm, I'm calling you out because why don't you check me? Why don't you tell me how? Read the New Testament. Jesus. I do. I've read the New Testament. You I, have not read it. You haven't read it with the eyes that can see. The law has been fulfilled in Christ. What are the two commandments of the New Testament, Rudy? You know the Bible so well. John, who hurt your feelings way back when? Oh, Lord. Now I'm back with my psychologist. <laughs> Nobody hurt my feelings except the fact that Mormonism is a lie. And it hurts people's lives, Rudy. That you have been deluded. You came to the belief that Mormonism is a lie? I didn't come to the belief. I came to the knowledge through the facts. Rudy, we've taken a lot of time with you. I just, I just, I just want to challenge you uh, to look and see, are you establishing your own righteousness before God? Do you think that the life you live is what's going to please him when you die? Or do you think it's your faith on his son that he sent on your behalf? There is the difference between Christians and Mormons. And if you answer that honestly, you're going to have to say, you know you believe when you die, you're going to go before God and say, I was a high priest. I paid my tithing. I obeyed the Sabbath day sometimes. I tried not to lust, even though I did on occasion. All these things, Rudy. And you know what God's going to say? I'm judging you by the law you pretended to keep. Go to hell. I sent my son to save you, and you never realized it was by his righteousness that you are saved, Rudy. On what pretentious fact do you have to make accusations that I may not keep the Sabbath, or I may not do this, or I may you not? You can't keep the Sabbath. You're not a Jew. You don't do it on Saturday. I mean, do you want me to go on and on? Do you stone people who break it? You claim to know the Bible, but you really don't have many, much basis on this thing, Rudy. It's not arrogance. I'm just quoting what the word says. That's the only knowledge I have. All right, my brother, keep watching. Love you. Bye.